Welcome back to the London Free Press podcast. Hope you're having a great week so well. Great week so far so well. Man, I am tired today, uh, but it's been a good week in the city of London. And I feel like we're all kind of banding together around something very specific. And I'm very excited to be chatting with London Free Press sports reporter, Ryan Payette. Ryan, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Lindsay. Thanks for having me again. Thank you for doing this with me. I am so excited to be chatting today because for the first time in 46 years, the London majors are just one one away from their first inter-county baseball league championship. How exciting. This team has created so much buzz, so much positivity in the city right now. Let's talk a little bit about this team. Um, one went away. The thing that kills me right now, though, is the next game the, that the majors play, they're going to be in Toronto. And not that I, I, I'll take the win where we can get it, but it would be nice if they were going to be at home in Labatt Park. So let's talk about the last game that they played because uh, it was amazing. Yeah, they, uh, you know, one thing I'll, I'll say is he's kind of the face of the team, and that's Cleveland Brownlee. He's been on this team for a, an awfully long time. And, you know, there he was. He, he, he's a heavy hitter, and he, he, he got the majors on the board right away. And, and this was a game that they didn't really know how their starting pitcher, Eduardo Perez, would, would, would pitch. He had been suspended for the end of the year and the start of the playoffs, five games, uh, hit a guy in the helmet on Brantford. And so he hadn't pitched in three and a half weeks. So they weren't sure they, the offense knew that they had to kind of give him some su support early that, to get him going. And man, Cleveland Brownlee like shows why he's a leader shows why he's a veteran. Um, he, he's the guy you want to step up in the situation and lead the way. And, and, you know, they got some nice players on the team, but th th there he is getting a big hit to get them up to nothing. And, you know, baseball is like any other sport. If you can jump ahead early, it kind of puts some doubts in the other team's mind. And, uh, it, you know, it was, uh, it, it was a great back and forth battle. And this has been an excellent series. And if I could just say about, um, you know, all kinds of team, we're starting to see teams come back. You know, the London Knights are coming back and the Western Mustangs football teams come back. And, you know, I, I think what you, after all this time off is, is you're hoping that, whatever team you support comes back and they're ready and they're good. And, you know, they do chase the championship because that's kind of a bummer if you, if you come back and you lose a bunch of games. Right. So, you know, the majors, uh, I give Rupert Chandler Dott and Scott Dart credit. They're ready. They built, they built a really good team. And this is a transitional time for the inter-county league because uh, <laughs> for, for the last 13 years, only two teams, Brantford and Barry have won. Barry, won the last six in a row before that last year was canceled. And then Brantford won the six in a row before that. And that that's a long two dynasties going, going there for a while. And um, there's kind of this open area right now. And who knows, maybe the London majors fill that gap. People want to, more people say, Hey, they won. Maybe they start a dynasty. And I think that's, um, that's something to look for here. What, what, what kind of, no, no matter what happens, if they close this thing out or, you know, Maybe people around the league, some of the good players are saying, hey, I don't, I wouldn't mind driving to London and playing there. They look like they have a fun, good team. And this could, you know, this is kind of what, uh, since Rupe Chandler Dott and Scott Dart took over from uh, Ard Needy many years ago, now for a decade and a half ago, this, this is what they wanted to build. And uh, it's nice to see, you know, after knocking on the door a few times over the years that um, they got a chance to do this. Yeah, so the Majors have been playing the Toronto Maple Leafs. The last time the Maple Leafs won was back in 2007. It seems like this entire season, and I'm glad you said it's been kind of a transitional year. This entire season, though, in my opinion, if I may say so, and I may be a little biased as a Londoner, but this has been the team to watch. What does manager Rup Shanderdat credit this to? Um because I, I don't know what is exactly different surrounding this team. And you made a valid point. It's very refreshing to have them come back after time off and then all of a sudden them be the ones that everybody's keeping an eye on. I think this year the majors were the team that other teams were dreading playing. Yeah, because they can score a lot of runs. And obviously it starts with pitching. Yeah, they have the two aces. And I remember in 2008 when they went to the – 
that was their best chance. They went to game seven against Brantford. And, and that was one of my favorite memories was even though the majors lost game six in Brantford, I mean, the Brantford team was outstanding. They were flying guys in from uh, the U S to, to pitch. And, you know, like, like they had a huge budget and they had a huge name team and, and the majors were kind of the scrappy, the, the scrappy all around team. And they, but they had two good pitchers in Josh, uh, uh, you know, led by Josh Palmer, two great starters and Adam Eklund. And this time around, they got Pedro De Los Santos, who was with Toronto the previous few years, like I think um, since 2017. And he decided, even though he works in construction in Toronto, he 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 said, I want to come pitch for London. And so they, they made an agreement there. And then, of course, Owen Boone, who's been on this team for several years and been a really quality pitcher and just really come into his own this year and been dominant. I mean, the way he pitched against Brantford to get them into the finals and um, you know, these two guys, that's, that's because of what Perez did and the team winning game three. Now they got these two aces uh, coming up here and, and, you know, like baseball is like anything else, you know, good pitching beats good hitting. They always say, they always say that's the cliche, but honestly, it's true. And it, especially this is a pretty good defensive team. Like, um, on, you know, on, in game three, uh, Tuesday, Humberto Ruiz, there's, you know, it was Toronto was threatening and he goes over the wall and, and catches one, like highlight the kind of stuff you see, you know, when Sportsnet and TSN show those, you know, top hundred plays or whatever like that, like that, that was right up there. And, you know, I, I think Lindsay, we have to, you know, we'll, we'll delve into this, but talk about the ballparks is like, if they were playing in Toronto, that, that hit that went 330 feet that Ruiz pulled back that's 20 feet over the fence in Toronto. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, you know, I, I say the London kind of plays to their ballpark, that big ballpark, they're bunting, you, you know, they're, they're taking extra bases on, on, on hits on the, on the, on the gaps and stuff like that. Toronto is more of a, you, you know, your traditional uh, small park uh, home run hitting team. They, they try to live and die with the two and three run homers. Right. And um, that's playing out here. But if, if like, like, it would be exciting to have another a game five that that final that final take do, do or die uh, winner take all. But it, you know, I remember being at that one in 08 um, with Brantford, and there was five thousand people there. I, I think the final count was fifty two hundred. It, it was the best atmosphere that I've ever been in in the park. I think for a baseball game, and um, it, it was a sight to see. And Brantford obviously won. And I think London's, London would love to have that kind of situation again Friday night. Everything would set up. I even looked at the weather. The forecast looks great. But I think I think we learned from the Leafs season, from everything else, right? Like, if you have a chance to knock a team out, even though they're good in their, in their own diamond, you, you better do it because, it, you know, those last games, you never know what could happen. One crazy play or, you know, somebody gets hurt or something and everything's turned on its head, right? You make so many valid points and that catch that you were talking about, it was like a highlight catch of the year. The majors actually tweeted a video of it. It was Kevin Pillar style. Um, when, yeah. yeah, like it was crazy. Old Kevin, old Kevin Pillar. I seen a few this year where he was bumbling it and dropping it. The old, old Kevin Pillar, Jay, sorry. Kevin yeah, yeah. In the Joey Bats era of the, of the Blue Jays. Yeah. Um, and you made such a good point too about the diamond. So Toronto has killed it at Christie Pitts this summer. They finished the regular season 11 and four. Is there any kind of concern? Because I know, like you said, so game four goes Thursday night. If we need a game five, it'll be back in London on Friday. I don't know that my nerves could sustain that. Like, obviously, again, I'd like to see them win it at Labatt Park, but I like, why are we tempting fate? Is there any kind of nervousness surrounding that record of Toronto playing at Christie Pitts? Because it does. It it really changes the game and hits. Yeah, there there is so there was. I was trying to count them last night, and there was about four balls that Toronto hit, like to the warning track. Those are gone. There, there. Labatt Park is such a is more like a major league style park, and Christy Pitts is kind of like your minor, you know, your minor baseball park that big men play at. And you know, like it's it it really like four. Four, four home runs and, and Roop, Roop Chandidat's always said we, we got to match them in home runs like you, you got to if, if Toronto hits two or three home runs you got to hit two or three home runs and that's that's about the only way to and then I, I seen a game this year I remember following along and like Toronto was down like or, or, or they're up like 19-7 and the final score ended up 2019 it's kind of like 
I guess uh, for major league fans to be like Fenway Park, right? Where, you know, crazy games could happen out of the blue. You could have be you know, a 2 2 game, and then all of a sudden the, the scores ends up being 13 9 or 13 10 or something like that. Like it's, it's just one of those ballparks. And, you know, if anybody's, uh, I haven't been there in, in several years now, but, uh, you know, one of my, as, as much as I love Labatt Park, Christy Pitts is just an amazing place to be. It's kind of like a bowl style, and you sit on that, you sit on the, you sit on the hill and everybody gets in for free. I mean, that's the way it was last time I was there. You know, you just, if you, if you, and it's, it's one of those things where you, you, you've seen it. If you've ever been to Toronto any sort of times, it's like that down by, um, by where the varsity blues play football too. Is like, you're at, you're at this beautiful sports uh, area, you know, people playing games and all that. And then you take three steps, uh, a block, and then you're right in the city the city aspect of things uh, out on the street in the urban, that urban lifestyle of everything happening. It's really, it, it's always been a cool dynamic and um, you, you know, Labatt Park too. I mean, I, I tweeted out a couple pictures last night, like just one of the most, it, not only is it the oldest grounds in, in uh, baseball history, but it's just with that, with the, with the London uh, cityscape in the background and that certain time, you know, at dusk and all that, it's just uh a wonderful place to be. And yeah, I, w I would like to go Friday too, but the sports reporter says, uh, you know, like, <laughs> you know, close it out early because it uh, goes on and on and on. Right. So, uh, but I, I the, you know, as a fan, you'd love to see it come down to the wire and that uh, this majors team, you know, they, I give them full credit. They've got, you know, if they don't do it, they're going to look back and say, what a missed opportunity because they had the pitching. They, they got a great lineup hitting and they got the defense. You got they got all three things, and um, and they have that you know they have that little um, you know chip the the will to win. Uh, we've seen that with the Blue Jays there, the Joey Bats area. You talked about that they you know they 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 put their nose to the grindstone and and they work and and try to get things done and, and make interesting moments. Like we talked about the Ruiz and we talked about Cleveland Brownlee's hit there. The bunt the bunts at the top of the order, McQueen and Wilkie, you know you know sac trying to sacrifice the guy and, and beating it out and then all of a sudden the bases are loaded and th th those kind of things change games. And so whether you like the new era of baseball where it's home run after home run after home run and strikeouts, uh, or you like the, um, this era, uh, the old time era where it's like bunt the guy over and small ball. And, and, you know, I know, I know London likes to play that way and, uh, and, you know, give yourself up to get an extra base kind of thing. And, and, uh, you know that's that's exciting too. So there's really something for everyone: the uh, old old style fan, or the or the or the new cl clobber it over the fence fan. Yeah, dare I say the thing about Labatt Park? It's majestic. And again, a little bit biased, living in London, being a Londoner, I love that ballpark. Um, what's capacity for Christy Pitts? Because Tuesday's game at Labatt Park, there's about 1,500 people there at that game. Um, are we kind of expecting the same for Game Four? Yeah, I think Toronto's Toronto's one of those places that draws well too. You know, they're uh, depending on what's going on. Uh, if it's if it's night now Thursday night, there was discrepancy whether they would play that game on Wednesday or Thursday. Early in the series, they said you know to be determined. They didn't know, so they picked Thursday uh, in the end. So um, you know, I I don't I would say Christy Pitts is a huge park, right? Like you could you could have. 10,000 if you wanted to, uh, if you wanted to do that kind of thing, uh, you can watch from the street. Uh, I think that's the beauty of it. Labatt Park, obviously, it's it's kind of hard, right? You can't, um, they got the big walls there, but, um, you know, like, so Christy Pitts could, uh, you know, I've seen as little as 200, 150 people there, and I've seen thousands and thousands of people there. So you have no idea Thursday night to what, what's going on. Uh, you know, it's kind of late in the, they, they don't usually go this late in the season, so it's getting pretty cold. Like you know what, it, you gotta you gotta wear a sweater uh, to the game. Uh, I know a Friday uh, there's a warning because it gets to about nine degrees by the end of the game, right? So um, you never know. But um, I, I think the Maple Leafs, um, the baseball Maple Leafs, have a, a great tradition and they got great ownership, uh, veteran ownership, um, and you know they'll they'll uh, they'll try to find a way to get that home field advantage. Take you know make the majors feel a little uncomfortable in there. I mean, that's, uh, that's what it's all about, right? Absolutely. Just quickly before I let you go, Ryan, um, if we do need a game five on Friday back in London, if anybody here wants to go to the game, what time do you suggest they get down to Labatt Park for? Well, I got there around seven and, um, you know, I had time to say, I got to set up my computer and all that stuff, but, and there was, um, there's a couple hundred people already there. So I guess if you want to see first pitch, they, they're, they're pretty 
good on time there. Like they, if they say 7:35 is the first pitch, they do it around that time. They, you know, national anthem and they're ready to go at 7:35. So yeah, I, I would, I, I would say half an hour. And it, you know, like it's just if you haven't been there in a while, because a lot of people haven't been there in a while because COVID. You know, it's 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 one of those places that you, you know, not too many people leave. Uh, even if the majors lose, they don't. They're not all frowny, right? Because it's a nice, it's a it's a great place to be. But I'd probably bring a seat warmer if uh, <laughs> it's because those bleachers, eh? You uh, they get a little cold when it gets uh, cold at night. But um, but the, it, it, it's just a, a fantastic. It was a fantastic atmosphere on Tuesday, and I imagine if if we get to Friday, it'll be electrifying, what like it was 13 years ago. Well, it's root, root, root for our home team. Uh, just want to wish our London majors the best of luck. If it does get pushed to game five, again, don't bite your fingernails off. Um, I feel good things that this 46-year drought is going to come to an end. Ryan, thank you so much for your time today. It's truly been my pleasure. I hope to uh, chat with you again very soon. Um, if you're listening to this right now and you're enjoying it, don't forget that we are streaming on all available podcast services, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple, Google. We are on YouTube and of course over at lfpress.com. And speaking of lfpress.com, tons of great stories happening over there. So if you've missed anything, if you're a little sleepy like me some days uh, and you need to play catch up, lfpress.com is the place to do it. We'll be back again next Thursday with another edition of the London Free Press podcast. Until then, stay well.